COVID-19 neurologic symptoms can generally be um, categorized into three broad groups. One is uh, central symptoms, and that would include headache, nausea, um, double vision, blurry vision, seizures, strokes. Um, the other group would be peripheral symptoms. That would include loss of taste, loss of smell, and finally musculoskeletal symptoms. We're learning a lot as we go through the pandemic about the frequency, duration, severity, and implications of neurologic complications of COVID. Um, basically, common symptoms would include headaches, loss of smell, confusion, disorientation. Typically in hospitalized patients, it's more frequent than in non-hospitalized patients. So the sicker the patient is, the more likely they are to experience neurologic uh, symptoms. Uh, so in the hospitalized cohort, depending on how you define neurologic symptoms, it may be as high as 20, 30% of patients experience some level of neurologic complications. We have a multidisciplinary team that involves basic neuroscientists, um, vascular medicine, vascular surgery, neurology, neuropsychology, and the purpose of the team is to rally around particularly focusing on uh, what happens to hospitalized COVID patients. So the sickest of the sick patients and then monitoring their trajectories, their outcomes long term. I think the main reasons are that if you look at implications on functional status, quality of life, um, basically neurologic symptoms tend to drive that the most. Neuro neurological and psychological symptoms are often the driver of quality of life even years out. Now obviously because this is a recent uh, pandemic, we don't know what happens to people say three, five years out um, in any great depth. Um, but we are uh, vigilant about the possibility that early neurologic uh, signs, symptoms of disease might implicate some long-term effects in terms of risk of cognitive impairment. There's cause for concern regarding the neurologic system uh, with COVID infection and yet another reason to not uh, treat it as just the flu. Um, but to do everything in your power to avoid, uh, avoid the infection. I think the benefit to the patient will be to understand and establish a biological link between what happens acutely with the infection and long-term symptoms. Because a lot of the long-term symptoms reported in long-haul syndrome um, may be a reaction to the stress caused by having had an acute illness. Um, sort of a neuropsychological response to an acute illness. However, it also may be more than that. It may be um, biologically driven, and that's very important if we're to understand how to intervene, how to prevent those sorts of symptoms.